By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my Goblins deck against a blue-red Trix deck. And with Trix, I mean he's added some interesting artifacts to his deck that make it a little bit tricky, but you'll see. And as you can see, I've just played a Mons Goblin Raiders on my opening turn. And my opponent plays a Glasses of Urza. And here we go with the tricks. So Glass of Urza is an artifact for one, and it says tap, see your opponent's hand. Now, when you're playing online, this is quite difficult. So I believe I'm just going to lay my cards out there, as you can see, so that my opponent can kind of see what I have. And it's not nice when you're playing an aggressive deck and you're playing against the color blue, which of course has counter spells, and your opponent can see exactly what you have in your hand, so what you're going to do. So playing my third red, just deciding to go for it and play the blast. Uh, I mean the ball lightning here. Expecting it to be countered, but it's not. So I'm dealing seven damage here. So that's great. He's down to twelve. And even though he can see my hand, I mean, what can he really do? He probably knows what I'm going to do next turn. And there you go, he untap. And he wants to see my new card, of course. And I'm just playing my second ball lightning and going for the kill. Worst case scenario, he counters, which is fine. It's one counter spell less. There you go. And he takes the damage, goes to 11. Playing my mountain and passing turn. I mean, hopefully he doesn't have another counter spell. There's not much you can do. So I'm just going to play my uh, my Goblin King here, making my Mons Goblin Raider 2-2 and attacking. He's killing it and I'm probably going to pump. This is a little brutal here because he basically has a 2 for 1 with that Lightning Bolt. So well done. By killing my Goblin King, my Mons Goblin Raider loses the bonus and loses Mountain Walk and then he can kill it with the Factory. And there's a Soul Ring. And it's looking a little problematic for me here. Playing the Goblin King. And I've actually made a mistake here. <laughs> As you can see, uh, I should have first played the Chain Lightning. Because Chain Lightning is a Lightning Bolt. And for two red mana, you can um, pass the Chain. So you can continue the Chain. So if my opponent, in this case you, would pay two red mana, he can pass the Chain Lightning and he can kill my Goblin King. So I should have first played the Goblin King and then played the Chain Lightning. And now I'm kind of stuck. So I decide to um, not play the Chain Lightning anymore. So that's actually three damage just gone. So it's very bad play. And we're drawing new cards. And as you can see, his Glass of Urza are tapped. So he cannot see my new hand yet. Playing Amon's Goblin Raiders. And I'm playing Goblins of the Flark. And the nice thing about Goblins of the Flark is that it has Mountain Walk on its own. So if he gets rid of the Goblin King, it still has Mountain Walk. And there is tap tap for mana, so there is a Suchi, so the 4-4 creature. Suchi meaning 4 in Mandarin Chinese, or so I have been told. And there is a strip. Interesting. Oh, of course, because Hammerheim can take away a land walk ability, so I stripped the Hammerheim. Interesting, because... Um, even though he has uh, the Suchi, which is a big creature, especially when you're playing with goblins. My goblins have Mountain Walk now, especially with the second uh, Goblin King on the field, it gives Mountain Walk to the other Goblin King. But still, I decide not to attack with it. Probably afraid that he's going to maybe Lightning Bolt one of the other Goblin Kings. And that will make my Goblin King very vulnerable. And as you can see, I was playing a Bloodlust there, and there was a good Lightning Bolt from Yoop. Because that would have been a lot of damage. That would have been 7 damage there. Because my Goblins now get plus 2, plus 2, because I have 2 Goblin Kings on the field. And as you can see, I'm again kind of stuck with that Chain Lightning, because my opponent has red mana. There's a copy artifact on the Sushi. And there's a Sage of Latinam. Sage of Latinam is one of my favorite creatures. It's one blue and one. 
and it is a 1-2 creature from the Antiquities expansion, and you can tap it to sacrifice an artifact and draw a card. And trust me, that can be really handy. So here I'm just taking the risk, realizing that um, I have to deal some damage here. So I'm just going to try to hit him. And there's a Psy Blast. And he's probably going to kill my Goblin King now. Oh no! Or maybe he'll forget to block? Maybe? No, he doesn't. Oh, he's a good player. So that means at least two damage in. And one more damage you dealt. And then I'm playing my Goblin Blue Brigade. So he's on one, and my Goblins of the Flark have Mountain Walk. So there is some possibility here for me to still win this game. He has to get rid of the Goblins of the Flark. That's what he has to do. And interesting here, if he would have sent the chain back to me, by the way, the chain lightning, I would have sent the chain lightning back to him again, dealing him three extra damage and he would die. So that wasn't an option for him anymore. If you're wondering why he didn't choose to chain back and, and, and kill the um, Goblins of the Flock. So here's a huge attack here from Yupin. It's probably like the, the final big attack with two Suchis and the... Uh, two Mishra's factories. So he's hitting me for 12 life in one go, and I'm only on eight, and that's the game. Yeah, side blasts are, are pretty useless when you're when you're on a low life total. So that's game number one for me. Let's see what what is going to happen in game number two. Game number two with you, the player on the right, on the play with his uh, blue red. Artifact Trickster deck. And let's see what's going to happen. I'm still shuffling, it seems. He's taking his hand, I'm taking mine. And you will have to try to uh, to win this one to get that third game in. So it was a nice first game with the Glass of Earth. Oh, it looks like I've taken a mulligan because I seem to scry there. I'm keeping the card on top. Oh, that's an explosive start there. Two Moxen to opening the game. And I'm opening with the Goblins of the Flark. Hey, man. So important. And no lands there for you. So very interesting. And I wonder why he kept the hand. So I'm attacking. Should be going. No, he's not going. I'm down to 19 because he's bolting. Uh, my Goblins of the Flark, and I'm playing an Ankh of Mishra there, but he's getting rid of it quite quickly. And he's playing a Maze of If. And there's a Chain Lightning, so finally I'm doing some damage. He's on 17. And there's a Copy Artifact, and he's copying his Blue Mox here. And I'm taking care of his Maze, and playing a Bull Lightning after. Very nice! It's going down to 11, because Maze of If is a big problem for Ball Lightnings, but when you play with uh, a Strip Mine, some land removal, and of course Blood Moons, you know, uh, Maze of If is not the biggest problem that you can have. So he's playing a Soul Ring, using the 4 mana to play a Suchi. And a Suchi is a bigger problem, and another Ball Lightning. So will he take the damage? He is, he's down to 5. So he's kind of in that Lightning Ball Chain Lightning range now. But I only have two cards in hand. He's probably going to attack here. So I'm going down to 16. And I'm playing a Goblins of the Flark. But there are no mountains there. Because he has Mountain Walk. Another attack here from the Suchi. And despite the fact he's all the way down on 5, it's not looking great for me. Oh, and there is a Surrender Pafrit. In a way, it helps because he's now dealing damage to himself. But, you know, I'm on 12, so two more swings with his army, and I'm dead. So I need something here. I need a lightning bolt. I need a chain lightning. I've got a disc. And, of course, it comes tapped into play. So that's nice. If I can activate the disc, that would be very helpful. Uh-oh. But there's a counter spell. And I think he's actually taking double damage here for that counterspell. So 
I think so. But anyway, he's then down to three and should be on four. He's attacking with the Suchi now. I'm on eight. So I was on 20 and he was on five. <laughs> but I mean, I'm completely knocked down to eight. Am I going to lose this still? Attacking here with both. This could be for the game. Because a ball lightning, ball lightning has trample. Oh no, there's blue elemental blast. That's the end of my ball lightning. And he kills my goblin in the process as well. I had to go for it. I had to go all in for that final victory. But that blue elemental blast is a killer. Even an ancestral recall, you show off. You can just kill me. Oh no, you can actually. I'm on one life. Okay. So I need a lightning bolt or a chain lightning and then no counter spell. He's going to one life, so we're both on one. And that's the game. I couldn't find I couldn't find that lightning bolt or chain lightning to finish him off. So well played, sir. And now we're going to the third game to see who wins this match. Game number three. So it's one one. So whoever wins this one wins the match. At least I'm on the play, which is a huge advantage when you're playing an aggressive deck. And obviously goblins, you can only play goblins aggressively. But, you know, you've seen in game number two the, the huge influence impact that sideboarding has. I'm pretty sure that I boarded in four red elemental blasts and my opponent four blue elemental blasts. So I'm sure we're going to see some blasts going back and forth. And I wonder if we're going to see that um, annoying glasses of Urza again. I must say it's very annoying uh, to play with your hand open. I don't see glass of Urza much. And I think it's a little bit underestimated because now that I'm playing against it, it's amazingly annoying. It's like really not nice. So hopefully we, I won't see it again. So there's a Goblin of the Flark turn one for me. And there's a Mox Ruby and an Island for my opponent. And a Time Walk, nice. Well done. Some blue power in there. Nothing I can do against the Time Walk. And there's a City of Brass taking a damage and a Surrender Afrit. So wow, that's quite a start here from Yoop. Very aggressive. More the kind of start that I want to have. And there is a Red Elemental Blast on the Afrit, and I'm able to deal a damage there and play a Chain Lightning as well. So that's not too shabby. Dealing four damage here and removing his 3-4 Flyer. So he's on 15. Playing a Blue, playing a Soul Ring. Tapping for four, playing a Suchi. So he has a very aggressive start and he's able to play really big and powerful creatures early game, which obviously is a problem for me. Tapping three. And I'm playing a Blood Moon here, so that's quite interesting. It means the City of Brass is changing into a mountain and my Goblins of the Flark has Mountain Walk, so it's unblockable now. But I still have that 4-4 Suchi that is facing me here on the battlefield. And we've seen in game number two how fast it can go. How fast you can go from 20 all the way down to zero. And there's four damage from the Suchi, and I'm on 16. And there's Glass of Earths again. Really? And also a Sage of Latinam, the one two creature from Antiquities. And he's probably going to activate his glasses. I thought so. And I have a Red Elemental Blast, a Disc, and a Bull Lightning. And I'm attacking for seven now. And is he going to chump block with his Sage? Knowing that lives really matter with these kind of racing matchups. It would save him two life. Because the Sage of Latinam is a 1-2. taking his time. And he's deciding to chump block. So meaning he takes four damage from the ball lightning and one damage from the goblins of the flark. So he's down to eight life. And I'm on 16, so I have double life total. But hey, his Suchi is a 4-4 creature. So it deals four times as much damage as my little goblin of the flark. And he has a lot of mana to spend. And there was the attack from the Suchi. And he's using his glasses. 
And I'm playing a disc here, and he's not countering it. I mean, he can probably, because he has City of Brass. He doesn't have two islands anymore because of the Blood Moon. He cannot produce two lands. And there's another attack, and I'm only on eight. So this is starting to look bad for me here. Of course, I have the disc still, but if I blow up the disc, I also lose my Blood Moon. I'm attacking here, bringing him down to six. I mean, that's an obvious choice. Passing turn. And because, because of that uh, Glass of Urza, my opponent knows that I'm having a Red Elemental Blast. So I'm doubting now, shall I use the disc or not? And I decide not to, I decide just to first take the damage, I'm still alive, and at least hitting him for one more next turn that he's down to five life. And I drew a Goblin Balloon Brigade. So he's down to five. Probably activating the disc. And I'm going to play the Goblin Balloon Brigade. Am I going to activate the strip mine? I don't think I should take away the City of Brass because he's only on five. So I'm sacking the strip mine. I'm taking away his volcanic island because it's going to be harder and harder for him now to, to take that damage being on five already. Then again, he knows my hand. And he plays an Ancestral Recall. And I play a blue elemental blast, and he plays a uh, red elemental blast, and he plays a blue elemental blast. <laughs> and again, I think this is the power of Glass of Urza because he knew that I had that red elemental blast. So we're both on fours. So it's very exciting here. Playing my Goblin Balloon Brigade. And so he's on a four turn clock here. Which is not all that impressive. And I think that's a problem with those um, goblins. They're just so small. Playing an island. Tapping for one blue. Playing a blue elemental blast. Oh, and those things. You know, I mentioned it earlier. Oh, they're so deadly when you're playing mono red. So after sideboarding. Oof. It's difficult. Only one card in hand, drawing another one, tapping for one, playing a Lightning Bolt, playing a Red Elemental Blast here, so that means he goes down to one life. That's nice. Only one more life, so if I can get him to tap the City of Brass, he's actually dead. If he will make a little mistake, if I could have a Red Twiddle. And he's thinking, how can I win? If I can draw a chain, a lightning bolt, a... Oh, what is he doing? Four, he taps for five. This is interesting, an earthquake dealing four damage to both. And actually, I don't know how this resolves. So does this mean that I lose the game because he plays earthquake and... Um, because he plays it, I get the damage first or... Does the damage go simultaneously and we're both dead? Or do I win the game because I was on four and he was on one? So he's now on minus three and I'm on zero? Does that make sense? I have no idea who's won this game. So this is kind of weird. Usually I say, hey, congratulations with the victory. Or hey, I've won, fantastic. But in this case, I do not know. So what do you think? Is it a draw? Did I win? Did my opponent win? Please leave a comment and tell me why you think so. For now, thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the playlists that you can see right now. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time. <laughs>